بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد as we mentioned Taqwa Allah Azza wa Jal Taqwa The place of Taqwa Is in our hearts And that's why We cannot really judge a person's Taqwa You can make general observations That a person has very little Taqwa When they're doing open sins They're committing open ma'asi and dhanub Then that's clear that that person has very little taqwa because taqwa would cause them if they're doing it open even in front of the people that means they're not shameful in front of Allah and they're not in shameful in front of the people so that means they really have very little taqwa so that makes a big that's very clear but the place of that taqwa so if you see someone who appears to have taqwa you really don't know you see that they're doing good they have the appearance of good but as far as what's in their heart and what they do in the night, that's only from Allah Azza wa Jal. Only Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala can make those kind of judgments. Only Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala knows what a person contains in their heart. And in what state a person will die. And that brings up a very beautiful and important hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that refers to that taqwa. And refers to Iman. And that refers to the inwardness that that, those acts of Ibadah or those aspects of Islam are contained within the heart. They're contained within the heart. And in this regard, the Prophet والسلام, said regarding regarding looking at the outward appearance of people. To not be deceived. Because again, as we mentioned, those great acts of ibadah, or those great aspects of Islam, we only know them from the heart. And this can only be judged by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because He's the only one who knows what's contained in our hearts. Tabaraka wa ta'ala. قال صلى الله عليه وسلم إن الله لا ينظر إلى أجسادكم ولا إلى صوركم ولكن ينظر إلى القلوبكم وأعمالكم رواه مسلم. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said. Verily Allah does not look to your bodies nor to your various shapes or the way your creation. This is all related to your outward appearance. But rather he looks to your hearts and your deeds. And this is in 
Muslim. Collected in Muslim. In this hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it verifies what we are saying. Because in fact, we try to make what we say, as is the tariqah, the, the way of Ahlul Sunnah, to come from the Nasus. Not that we make up something and then we run to get evidence to support it. That's the way of Ahlul Bid'ah. That's the opposite. That's the opposite of Ahlul Sunnah. The opposite of the way Ahlul Sunnah makes istidlal. So, from this hadith, we deduce those benefits that we were mentioning that the place of taqwa is in the heart and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is concerned what's in your heart because a person can have an outward appearance that doesn't seem that appear, uh, appealing to people maybe he or she is not that handsome or beautiful maybe he or she maybe they are restricted in their means and their wealth and they don't have necessarily beautiful dress they're not blessed with that and maybe even perhaps they have an appearance which some people associate with being weak iman but it lets us know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what he's really tabarak wa ta'ala looking at is our hearts and our deeds and some of the ways in which we can work on our heart and I'm first and foremost in need of practicing this and hearing and benefiting so it's a reminder to myself and to anyone listening is by reading the Quran to help exercise the heart and knowing, uh, looking up at the tafsir, looking up the meanings, and trying to practice. And that encompasses both deeds that will help uh, move the heart, as well as by practicing those ayats, that will be the righteous deeds. So those things will help you increase your iman, help you come closer to Allah and help you actualize taqwa Allah Azza wa Jal. Also, in addition, along with that, which is, it almost encompasses that as well, is this in general seeking ilm al nafir seeking beneficial knowledge. Knowledge of the Quran, knowledge of the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the other sciences in Islam. So by striving to better your knowledge of who Allah is and how to worship Him, because in fact that's what it is, the person who is striving to learn more about Islam, the Talib al-Ilm, is in fact Talib al-Jannah, kama qala salam That the person who strives to seek knowledge is striving to get to Jannah. That, because that, that's the tariq, that's the path to Jannah. So since seeking knowledge of Islam is one way, it's an actual act of ibadah, which is a way to strive to get to paradise, because we're all striving to climb that mountain, the mountain to paradise, in fact. And I'm just making a similitude, or an analogy. It's as if, like I'm doing now, hiking up this little mountain, and there's rocks, there's obstacles, perhaps I have to go through the woods and there's different things. Likewise in life, on our way to Jannah, if, we're, if, we're, if Allah blesses us to be of Ahl Jannah, you're not going to get there easy. It's not going to be simple by saying that you're from Ahl Iman, you're from Ahl Sunnah, or you have Iman, or you're Salafi, or you're, you follow the Salaf, or uh, you follow the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, or what have you. It's not simple, as simple as just saying something. But it requires our practice. It requires moving the heart. It requires cleaning the heart. He doesn't look to your outward appearance. 
but rather he looks to your heart and deeds. So those ways in which we can move our hearts and get our deeds going is by seeking knowledge and the Qur'an, reading the Qur'an and practicing it. Because by seeking knowledge and practicing that knowledge, that means you're going to be implementing what you learned and you're going to do it by ilm, with knowledge, and you're going to have fiqh, understanding, and basira, and insight on how to practice the religion, on how to come closer to Allah. You're learning to come to, to worship your Lord better. The Prophet wasallam said in this regard, مَنْ سَلَّكَ طَرِيكًا يَلْتَلْمِسُهُ بِهِ عِلْمًا سَحَّلَ اللَّهُ لَهُ طَرِيكًا إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ Whoever strives on the path of knowledge, then Allah will make easy for him the path of Jannah, letting us know the path of knowledge, Islamic knowledge, beneficial knowledge, is the path to Jannah. That is, if you have ikhlas, you have sincerity to Allah. You're doing it for the sake of Allah, you're doing it to come closer to Allah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us of our sins and bless us with ikhlas, with thabat ala sunnah, wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.